the Hylia Speedway race tonight. If you had a chance to follow your heart and chase your dreams, would you? Even if it meant giving up a sure thing? Who do you know that goes to Harvard, goes to med school and races <laughs> race cars at the same time? This is the crossroads where Patrick Staropoli finds himself. I never feel more free or alive than, than when I'm behind the wheel of a race car. Certainly when you have the fastest race car on the track, I mean, that's a, that's a feeling like no other. He was valedictorian of his class at Plantation High graduated from Harvard University, the first in his family to go to college, and was on a safe path to becoming a doctor. When people hear I'm interested in being a doctor and a race car driver, uh, they kind of first don't know how to react and don't know if I'm being serious. Then his life took a sharp turn when he entered a reality TV show for aspiring race car drivers in the summer of 2013. From a field of 700, he was chosen as one of nine finalists and won. Uh, this year my life's kind of got turned upside down a little bit. I had a huge opportunity come my way last year when Michael Waltrip Racing and Peak Motor Oil formed this competition called the Peak Stock Car Dream Challenge. Uh, he called me at work a couple times and I finally pick up the phone and he's kind of stumbling over his words. He's actually kind of quiet and he's like, dude, I'm going to the contest. And he just re keeps repeating it over and over again and I just started pacing back and forth. I could hear him getting a little bit choked up and I started to also. It was unbelievable. I couldn't really think that he was going to get a chance to chase his dream. In the end, I was selected as the winner, and now this year I've been offered a five-race contract uh, to compete in NASCAR, so that's what we're gearing up for here. In January, Patrick took a one-year leave of absence from the University of Miami's medical school and started his journey in the NASCAR K&N series. The NASCAR K&N series is a development series in the NASCAR system. We are much to NASCAR as a minor league baseball team is to major league baseball. It's a place where you, you know, the stars come out and shine and you pick them up and they move forward. Patrick has always been a superstar in the academic world, but he's behind the curve at racing's upper levels. Success in racing isn't assured, and he's already $60,000 in debt from medical school. Soon, the 24-year-old must decide which road to take, doctor or race car driver. My whole education up to this point basically is, is sort of riding on the line here. Will he go with his head or his heart? Seems like everything he applies himself to, he just kills it. I mean, it's a little ridiculous sometimes. I didn't know he was a, you know, car driving. I thought it was for something like, I'm going to go abroad and help the poor or something, that's <laughs> what a lot of medical students do. I said, car driving, okay. I think it's like the experience of a lifetime, you know, mm -hmm. why not? Maybe you won't go back to medicine. <laughs> you say, I really like this a lot. Why should I go back, right? You know, that's always the danger of doing something like that, right? So. He'd been coming to the track since he was an infant, thinking he was probably somewhere around six months old when we first started taking him. A little earplugs in and all that good stuff, you know. Patrick's dad, Nick Staropoli, is an auto mechanic and former recreational race car driver. Yeah, I think we got on to something here. We Thanks. shook a little rust off, got our act together, and uh, this thing's starting to come together pretty good. Patrick started racing competitively as a teen. There he comes, ladies and gentlemen, Patrick Staropoli. Where's mom at? Hope she gets out here soon. There you go. There's your, there's your winner tonight, Mr. Patrick Scarpola, the, the 51st year in Hialeah Speedway. Patrick's mom, Arlene, who owns a gift shop in Plantation, Florida, says her son has always been obsessed with racing. Any prediction? Oh, I'm going to win. He's going to win. I'm going right. to win. We were big NASCAR fans. We would watch on TV. So he would reenact every second of a NASCAR race or his dad's race at Hialeah Speedway. And I mean everything. He would do commercials. He would move each car around his track that he created. As a kid, Patrick would watch his dad race with his friend and fellow racing junkie, Anthony Sandora, who now works at a truck repair shop. Anthony's my best friend. I just say he's my brother. At Nick's races, young Patrick and Anthony would film each other, pretending they were broadcasters. We are going to take you through a race. <laughs> Hey guys! Hi! And 
there's the driver of the 97, Nick Starpoli. And he's getting ready. He's got his helmet on. I have something to say. Uh, you know, he's going to win. Join us later for the race. But one night at Hialeah Speedway, something awful happened. Their playful moment abruptly shifted gears, a moment that would propel Patrick to pursue a career in medicine. We're back, and the race is about to begin. My dad is starting second from last, the Red 97. Sorry, friends, but 97 has gone in the wall. Was it a big ball of fire? Because I saw flames. Well, I'm here with Patrick. Patrick, Pat, Patrick, stay here. You stay here. They got mercy. Yeah, they got mercy. I just remember hearing fiberglass ripping and tearing and people calling my name. And somebody reached in and, and grabbed my arm and hold my hand. I was screaming. And, I split my forehead open, I broke my nose, compound fracture in my left forearm, shattered in my calcaneus on my left leg, blew my heel apart, and snapped two bones in my right foot. Oh, and I fractured my back, L1, L2 fracture. My right hand, my right arm was still good. It's the only thing that didn't break. Nicky is just fine, he's a little bit disoriented, rang his bell a little bit, as you can understand. But he is just fine. They're going to get him out of the car here in just a minute. They're just letting him catch his breath. I got to see him right before they airlifted him out of uh, the racetrack and ironically they took him straight to Jackson Memorial Hospital and the, the Rider Trauma Center which is where I go to medical school now so it's always weird for me whenever we, we go see patients or something in the hospital and I walk through there and I'm like this is one of the rooms you know where, where they saved my dad's life uh, so it's kind of weird how things come full circle like that. When you have someone that you love and care about in the hospital every word that a doctor says kind of hangs in your head you know so Seeing him kind of recover from that, I mean, he, they did such a good job with him when he was in the emergency room and everything. He never even ended up needing like plastic surgery or anything. It was miraculous what they were able to do. And so that kind of whole whole thing, it wasn't like I saw that and said, oh, I want to be a doctor now. But I just, I remember being interested by it and saying, wow, this is so cool what these doctors were able to do. And kind of having that in the back of my head and then going up to Harvard and taking some of the pre-medical classes um, and it kind of put all those interests together. Young Patrick was shaken by his dad's crash, but he didn't lose his passion for the sport. Patrick began racing go-karts when he was 13. I wasn't very happy about it, but again, it was something he really wanted to do. And how can you tell somebody who has this vision in his head, no. Patrick's had some pretty decent bang-ups in the late model. You know, always come out okay, but it puts it in perspective. There's that quick little concern when you strap them in, and I've always kind of said somewhat of a short little prayer, right? You know, right after I strap them in. You no, know, I trust I trust Anthony with my life. I mean, that's why he's the guy who bolts me in the car. That's who I trust to tighten my belts, make sure my steering wheel's on, because I've had that happen before. Patrick is more strategic and a planner, and um, visualizes I think the race before he even gets to the race. And my husband was the type that he would just get in the car and drive it like a cowboy. So, and I mean drive it like a crazy person. So they're completely opposite in, in that. With Patrick, you know, he lived inside me. That's my little boy and it's just a different feeling when it's your son out there racing than your husband who you grew up with and then he, he raced when we were so young it didn't really scare me like it does watching Patrick. I'm not like mom I don't I don't run away and hide now I'm right there like let's go let's go let's go like you know, I'll stand up at the fence, I'll cheer them on if there's an extra headset that I can put on to listen to things. 
I go intermittently between races and I watch sometimes a little or I watch a lot in a certain way at the track. She can't really watch. She'll walk back and forth, she'll stand in the background, she'll pace. I walk behind the bleachers, sometimes I'll listen and sometimes I won't. I'll put my fingers on my ears and sing songs out loud so I can't hear what they're saying. <laughs> Because I don't like to be with people. I don't want people to say anything to me. I just want to focus myself. Um, I find that I'll stay a little bit longer, and then I walk away, and then I go back, and I stay a little bit longer. But I, I just can't stand there the whole time and watch the whole thing. Patrick began his 2014 NASCAR season in February at New Smyrna Raceway. He had a rocky start after his crew missed a connecting flight and had to drive through the night from Atlanta to Florida. Another hour to fine tune the car, and that's it. Time to get ready to qualify. You leave pit lane. It'll be coming to the green the first time, white checkers, right. and run one more hard just for tire pressure okay. knowledge. You try to be as aggressive early as you can with the throttle. Okay. He's still not perfect. I don't know that it'll ever be perfect. It was a rough practice, but it's okay now. It'll be all right. The car looks good. It just it just constantly looks like you're you're turning left all the time. From the time you get there, qualify. Don't change nothing. Qualify how you've been running the car because you get a couple real fast laps out of it. Oh, that blows. That blows. Patrick's slow qualifying time. Many would be starting the race near the back of the pack. Well, got to got to clear the garbage, and we'll have a good race car. I was counting on having a good qualifying. I, I thought you would too after what we did today. Nobody went anywhere. You know, everything slowed down a little bit, but we shouldn't have been any slower than. No, that. You, sh you should have been able to pull a 60 at least. I would have. I would have thought. Yeah. Yeah. This year, we'll get him in the race, right? Cooler heads prevail. Just bide your time, stay out of trouble. <sighs> when it doesn't go as, as you intended, it's always frustrating for everybody concerned. You try to sort out why, if you can zero in on a reason and correct it. If you can't, you let it go and focus on the next thing. Not bad, not bad. The car woke up after a long run and into the center. He was killing them guys. You, you were just making up so much yeah, ground. Killing them in the center. So much, you're killing them. You, you look like you shot across the center of the corner, like just boom, like that. And then, well, yeah, a little slow up, getting off. I couldn't check out. Like, you drive it like that, I'll work hard out. I'll lay off. You drive shit like that, we're on it, bro. Good job, man. Good job. It'd be fantastic to go out there and win a race. It'd be something to, to do that. Is it realistic? Pro probably not, to be honest with you, for a guy to come in for a couple races and be able to win races, but it takes the time in the seat, it takes the experience to move forward to be able to win races and win championships, and that's what he's doing now, he's paying his dues, and he's, he's learning a lot, and he realizes he's only got so many chances. The hardest, the hardest win is the first one, because the driver needs to prove to himself that he can do it, not to anyone else. And once he's been through that, the next and the next is they're much easier. It's, it's. Uh, I could see fairly likely that he pulls off a win in the five races we've got to run.
Two days after the new Smyrna race, Patrick had a better run at Daytona. He finished eighth, rallying after an early spin-out. It's a great car. We came from 18th to 4th to the back of the field, which I don't even know how many cars were on the track at that time, all the way back up to 8th at the end. It was a great run. I mean, we passed, we passed double the amount of cars we passed the other night, and that was a lot. We got out of the car after Daytona. We were all celebrating and talk, talking around the pits and everything like that, and then I got an email that uh, one of our papers that, that we recently finished up down at that University of Miami got accepted for publishing. So I got my ophthalmology paper that we submitted earlier this year uh, published as an abstract for this Arvo uh, convention that they have for all of ophthalmology. So I just found out they got accepted into that. Again, it comes back to that, that having two worlds uh, going on at the same time. If I could split myself in half, that, that would help. It was about studying, if you want to know the, yeah, details. the details. Yeah, okay, it was studying the incidence of glaucoma in like the Haitian population down in uh, you know, Little Haiti and everything in Miami. So it's yep. actually a lot more prevalent there than people know about, so we were kind of doing the statistics on all of that. In between races, Patrick returned to medical school to meet with his mentor and discuss ongoing research projects. I mean, there's a couple of potential projects, you know. Mm -hmm. One is an optic nerve project that we can look at the topography of the optic nerve. Mm -hmm. We can collect some samples and look at the genetics of one group against another. And this is a fairly unique group. Actually, I think the, the best thing would be if you can write a paper of the stuff you collected last year. I think the data we have there is enough to, to do the paper on, or should we, do we need to collect, collect more? Because there were some fares that we didn't have. So you have a pretty good big data set. I think, I think you're in pretty good shape. Right. So, okay, yeah, that sounds know, so cool. So there's plenty to do. So depending right, yeah. on, depending the on how busy you're raising. <laughs> right. And, you know, yeah. so. After this next race, we don't know what's going to happen, if I'll have more races or not. So I should be uh, back here full time, depending on what happens. But I'll keep you updated uh, okay. on that. You're not going to quit medical school. Yeah? No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's good. That's good. It's always, it seems to be coming, kind of like a slap in the face like that. You get so absorbed in, in one activity or thing and then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, I have this whole entire, uh, you know, pursuit that that's, that's right here too. I feel like it's a Blair Witch Project right now. Patrick, where are you going? About to go hog hunting out here at 5 o'clock in the morning in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> New experience, never did this before, so really can't wait to get out there. Think you're gonna bag anything? <laughs> Better bag something, right? Wait, what, what, what is that sound we hear? <laughs> Great question. Hope it doesn't eat us. Life as a NASCAR driver isn't confined to the track. For Patrick, it also means leaving your comfort zone when invited on a hunting trip by a sponsor. They're, they're pretty solid animals. Mm -hmm. If it's a smaller one, you can just shoot it right in the gut. But you know enough about anatomy. Yeah. Its its lungs and heart are going to mm -hmm. be you know right behind its front legs. Okay. Um, if it's a really big hog, though, you're going to want to go back below, sort of below the ear. There's a soft mm -hmm. spot there. Hit it there. Okay. It's that easy. It's really not complicated. Cool. There's nothing even to be. Nervous about? There literally is so much more that you do beyond just sitting in that race car and I mean whether it's you know going hunting, autograph sessions, uh, you know TV things that, that you get to do. I mean it's all fun and, and everything like that but it really takes away from just being purely at the racetrack and being a race car driver wrenching on your cars. They handed me a gun and said here you gotta go sit in this tree for, for the next three four hours and you just you know you sat there and waited for something. And after about you know an hour and a half of just staring at nothing, you kind of okay, cool, I get it, it's peaceful out here. And then I just pulled out my phone and started started tweeting. So I don't know if that's proper hunting etiquette, but uh, it was it was fun. The second go around, I ended up getting two hogs. So um, that was that I didn't expect that. And he called me. He was like. Devin, I was like, what? He goes, I just killed something. I'm like, what? He goes, I kind of feel bad. I shot a hog. And I'm like, why do you feel bad? He goes, I don't know, because it was like a living thing. And I'm like, yeah, but you're hog hunting. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? He was like, well, I guess I didn't feel too bad. I shot another one. <laughs> And as you, as you start to do things, it's kind of like, okay, cool, I can see myself you know, doing these type of events more often. I mean, I thought the hunting deal was pretty cool. I was a little uh, you know, weird about it at first, but I mean, I, I had fun that, that whole day. I'm just going to go out there and lay it all on the line and see what we can do. Bristol, this is a huge race. There's going to be a lot of 
publicity and emphasis and all that kind of stuff on it. So, you know, you got you to go big or go home at this point. I feel like we had two really solid races that I'm proud of that, that were coming into here. Um, but, you know, we, we got to perform now. He needs to bring it. And he knows that, you know, and um, I'm sure he'll do everything he can to make that happen. Cars must maintain their respective track position, lane, until they have crossed the start finish line. Just remember where you're at. Respect this racetrack. Respect each other out there. Let's all have a good day. Gentlemen, would you please remove your hats? Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you today and thank you so much for bringing each one of us here. Lord, we thank you so much for giving each one of us the opportunity to race here at Bristol Motor Speedway. And Lord, we pray as we go out here, as we race, as we compete against each other, we just pray that each one of us will compete fairly, Lord, and, and that you would just be with each crew, we be with each driver. We pray for your protection, your safety. We just pray that you would cover each one of us with your precious blood, that we may all go home safely, Lord, later on this evening to our families. Lord, we just love you so much and thank you for being here with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For the first few laps here, start picking them off going forward. We know we got a good race car, man. Let's finish this. Come on, roll that metal. Come on. This track is so insane. Like the first practice, I couldn't even hold my head up straight. My eyelids were like closing on me and stuff. It was more G-force than I've ever experienced in a car before. My head was basically getting held down the entire time. So you gotta <laughs> keep your head up straight so you can see. And your line right here. Back inside and clear. Clear. Take your time up there, let it come to you. Got a really good car, okay? Watch for debris, Rod. Watch for debris. Go, 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 go. Right here, run the metal, run the metal. Inside. Dig hard. Dig hard. Clear, clear. All the way to the line, right here, hard. Good job, Patrick. Good job, guys. Patrick, hell of a job. One more spot, man. <laughs> that was coming. Um, it was an awesome run. Pretty minimal damage to the car, considering all the craziness that went on today. There was a lot of guys beating and banging, and, and we got up there with the leaders. I could see the front at the yeah, end. Nice. Did it again. Nice. nice. It was a good Nice run. job, kid. Good run, man. The week after Bristol, a confident Patrick went to Irwindale, California for his fourth race. We fell all the way back to like 13th or 14th at one point and we were almost like a corner away from going the lap down and so no one really knew what I was doing. When he dropped outside the top 10, yeah, and then I started getting nervous. I was wondering how far back did he think he needed to go. I, there was a little bit, of, uh, little bit of concern when he got way back there, but I've never heard him talk on the radio the way he did that night. But we were riding around at half throttle, so it was kind of like, you know, just a Sunday joy ride. I came over there, like, don't worry guys, I'm just riding at half throttle. When he decided it was time to go, he just put it down and, uh, and away he went, man. It was so methodical, lap after lap, just picking off car after car, wherever he wanted to put it. When it came time to go, he pulled the trigger and went to the front. So and I'm like on the phone with my mom, I'm texting my dad. I just started screaming and yelling and running through the house all by myself. And you just hear me on the phone with my mom. Oh my God, he won! And I'm just screaming, jumping up and down. The second race in the k and Pro wow. Series West. Yes. My brother won a NASCAR race. Yes. This guy is a Harvard grad, a, a current medical student, and now a winner here. This is the most amazing feeling in my entire life. I can't even believe we won this thing. Um, I might be supposed to be out here, man. I won a contest last year to get this ride with Bill McAnally, and we finished fifth in our first start. We thought that was going to be it. He gave us a five-race deal this year. Uh, we've been running really strong all year, just haven't had all the pieces of the puzzle come together, and tonight they did, and we, we won the thing. I can't even believe it. Winning proved to Patrick that he made the right choice to take a leave from medical school, but soon he must let the University of Miami know if he's going to return next year or forfeit his coveted spot for good. You cannot do both. Okay, you can do both at different times. So you can take time off and say, I want to do car racing for five years and then go back to medical school. But nobody can really be a race car driver and also um, a physician at the same time. But it's kind of funny, the more doctors I talk to, they all tell me, you know, you're crazy, go be a race car driver, racing's so cool. 
And anyone I talk to on the racing side, it's like, dude, you're nuts. There's so many race car drivers that have come here and just like lost everything. Go be a doctor. You got race gas, rubber, that whole smell, that whole atmosphere is just electric. When you think about sitting in an office, being a doctor, it doesn't really compare when you compare the two at that level. He's come so far, we all just kind of keep hoping and praying that something else has got to happen, you know? They can't just let this kid go. My mailman came here one day while I was laying under the race car and he handed me a copy of Harvard Magazine and Speedway Illustrated and he said, here, this should help with your identity crisis. <laughs> I think he should go racing. Give it a chance. How many of us get an opportunity to do something that you dream about. Whatever he chooses to do, I mean, I got his back all the way. Uh, at the end, it, it's my decision, and um, you know, I'm going to do what I feel like is right. But I definitely listen to everybody and try to take all that in. A few weeks after the Irwindale race, Patrick returned to South Florida and watched the tape national broadcast of his first NASCAR victory. Feels like they're talking about somebody else. <laughs> Patrick already started dropping back. He's, he's just let's see where he's at now. See, this is about when I'm figuring out that everyone behind us is laying back to save their tires. We took off and started passing people. And then this guy is a Harvard grad, a, a current medical student. We're just running like this. I hope people get more races. Keep coming after that. Unbelievable, man. I'm the guy. Yep. How's it going, man? Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, are you going to be on TV pretty soon here, or are you? Uh, oh, they just they, they just interviewed us. Actually. Oh, they just interviewed yeah, yeah. You? Uh -huh. oh, yeah. So, hopefully, there'll be more races in the future. <laughs>